Hey, it's Bruce here for the Part-Time Prospector. Have you ever wondered how quartz is tied up with, with gold? And gold tied up with quartz? And why doesn't it occur in sandstone or something else or some other type of rock? So it all comes down to how did the gold get up to where basically we're finding at the moment. So this is a bit of the story of my understanding of the geological processes that push gold up through the crust. So we're going to go back in time about two and a half billion years. And so that is a time that most geologists believe was the major phase of gold mineralization occurring within Western Australia. It occurred in different times in different other places around Australia and around the world. But in WA, for the eastern gold fields that runs from Norseman in the south to Waluna in the north, and maybe a little bit further, that is the main sort of driver, is the gold occurred around about 2.5 billion. And that is with a B. So it's a long, long time ago. When you think that the Earth was supposedly made about 4.5 billion years ago, this is events that occurred not that long after the formation of the Earth. And so the Earth was quite a different place from what it is today. There might have been some microbes hiding in some corners, but there was nothing really. There was no dinosaurs or anything like that. So this is a very, very horrible place. So what was driving the gold to come up? So as these structures, the faults that were forming, there was a lot of faults breaking across the continent. They were bringing up the good stuff from below. So if we do it on the whiteboard here, just do a, a very simplistic cross section through the earth. So this is the surface of the earth. Now, None of this is to scale, okay? I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. And we've got trees growing on the top. Now, just to show you that that's where the atmosphere is. Remember back in those days, there was no trees. Again, down in towards the center of the earth, it doesn't even have to be at the center of the earth, but at least 50 to 100 kilometers below the surface of the the, the earth that existed 2.5 billion years ago, there was these magma, change, magma chambers. These are similar to the magma chambers that exist underneath present day volcanoes. And so these are hot, bubbling, just oozing masses of molten rock, just, just waiting to, to explode. They're in phenomenal temperatures down there. They're talking hundreds, if not thousands of degrees centigrade under phenomenal pressures. You know, thousands of, of um, pounds per square inch if you want to use the old thing. If it, I, I don't know what the exact number is. You could look it up, but it's very, very high pressures, very high temperatures. And so this stuff is look, just looking for a way to get out. And as soon as a break occurs in the ground, be it from tectonic activity, be it from a meteorite impact, be it from whatever, the ground breaks. And this is caused a fault that runs along the ground. Now this fault doesn't have to be massive width, it doesn't have to be like the ones you see on the movies where they open up and old houses fallen in. It can just be half a millimeter wide, a millimeter wide, maybe a centimeter wide. That's just enough to release the pressure that's in one of these chambers. But one the interesting thing that's happening down in these chambers at the moment is as it's bubbling away, it's starting a process called differentiation. And that is what's happening is when you get um, lighter minerals and elements are starting to float to the top, medium ones in the middle and heavier ones at the bottom. And so it's a bit like, uh, you know, oil on water. Oil floats above the, is lighter, it flows, floats above the water. And so you get these layers occurring around the outside. Now, nothing to scale here. So you've got the lighter stuff at the top, heavier stuff at the bottom. And it's just sitting there waiting to go. A fault comes along. For whatever reason, hopefully you can see this blue. And it, it occurs, and it does not have to reach the surface. The vast majority of the time it never reached the surface. And this could have stopped tens or more kilometers below the surface. So 10 plus kilometers below the surface is this point here. The first thing that occurs when this high pressure liquids and gases down there is that, sorry, liquids, the there's no gas down there. High pressure liquids finds this zone of low pressure is that it starts to 
immediately race up the crack. So it starts bubbling its way up and pushing it. And as it pushes its way up the, this zone of weakness, this fault zone, it's applying phenomenal pressure and a nominal uh, effect on the, the surrounding rocks. And it's pushing these rocks apart, pushing them. And the more it pushes apart, the more that it sucks up stuff from down the bottom. So the first stuff that's going to zoom up this fault plane is going to be the light stuff. And what is the light stuff? You guessed it, quartz. Quartz has an SG, or specific gravity, around about 2.6, 2.65. And it's one of the first things to zoom up the pipe. So as it zooms up, it's going up the, up the system here, pushing apart, pushing and pushing and pushing apart, and actually reacting with the, the, the surrounding rocks. If there's a subsequent phase of mineralization or faulting, okay, now this is the key one part here. If there's subsequent phases, the next heavier stuff starts to go up the pipe. And then there's another event, more heavier stuff things. And the last stuff to go up the pipe, I'm calling it pipe, but I mean go up the fault zone, is the heaviest stuff. The heaviest minerals going up. And what is the heaviest minerals? The heaviest mineral that you and I are interested in, gold. That's when it goes up. So what we want to find is a structure that's had repeated and multiple breaking and reforming and more uh, um, quartz and minerals being ejected in and over and over and over and over again. And the more times this happens, the more likely is we're going to get to the stage where the heavy stuff was brought in. But this rock is not uniform in, in, in composition. There might be some, you know, basalts on one bit, granites on another bit, and so on like this. But if you've got a band, for example, of iron-rich rocks, dolerites, something like that, even basalts, okay, they're iron-rich. The, the, the quartz, the, the, the fluids coming up bearing golds, gold will start to react with the iron-rich rocks. This is why we, we tell everyone, when you're going out looking for gold, look in the greenstone belt, because the greenstone belt is iron-rich rocks. It is the, 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 the gabbros, the dolerites, the, uh, the basalts. And also look in the banded iron formations. Okay, so the banded irons are alternating layers of iron-rich sediments with uh, silica and chert and back and forth it keeps alternating. And so if this is a, a zone of banded iron or biff, sometimes you show it on a, um, on a um, uh, geological map as a SIF, S-I-F, stands for sedimentary iron formations, basically the same stuff. The, the, the gold-bearing solutions will be racing up the fault, intersecting this iron-rich thing, and start to precipitate out of, of, um, of the solution. And so what, end, what you end up having is concentrations of gold in here, and minor concentrations of gold along here. So what we're looking for when we get out there is we want to find iron-rich iron uh, rocks, we want to find quartz veining, and we want to find quartz veining that's experienced multiple phases of breaking and reforming and re-cementing and breaking again and more minerals coming in. So, so what does that rock look like? We all know what the, the classic white quartz blow looks like. Looks white like the snow almost. It's hungry quartz basically as, as uh, we used to call it. Hungry quartz has nothing in it. It's basically that first lot of stuff that came up and nothing followed up. We, what we want to look for is quartz that, now if I draw a, a zoomed in layer of a quartz vein here, this is quartz country rock on their sides. And so the next layer of, of, of injection of, of mineralized bearing fluids will either come up along the, the edges and we will start seeing laminated bands sitting near the edges of the quartz. So you may be a, a barren inner core, or barren as in almost solid white, and the, 
and the hanging wall foot wall areas will be laminated and they can be very close together we're talking maybe millimeters apart to maybe centimeters apart usually no more than a few centimeters apart and they thin black lines in the quartz each one of those thin black lines represents a, a phase of mineralization coming in and the more of these black lines you got you're right the more phases of mineralization there was but that that's one form of mineralization that occurs and that generally occurs down towards the southern end of the gold fields down in Norseman for example there's a mine down there unfortunately closed in the 1990s but they pulled them more than a million ounces out of this quartz reef it was about between one and two meters wide and it ran more than an ounce per ton and that ran like that for nearly oh I don't know started in the 30s and wound up in the 90s so what's that 50 to 60 years so there was a lot of gold in that system that just sitting in these laminations the other type of mineralization to keep an eye open for and this is a somewhat more common one is that as the mineralization comes up it starts to break this quartz and so you get this sort of change colors here you get this sort of pattern all over the thing of just broken quartz you must probably seen it around it's called brecciated quartz um, and so the mineralization is coming up and as it comes up it moves from around each one of these rocks and these little almost looks like um, looks like concrete um, with not much cement in it just a lot of rocks that have been slightly moved apart and re-cemented together with more quartz or generally what we're looking for is a lot of iron around these this, these quartz bits these quartz fragments and so the more iron that's in the system and the same thing up here the more iron that got pumped up the more likely that gold is going to precipitate out so the more busted up you can see the quartz and the more iron staining so that's the reds the browns sometimes into the blacks that is the good mineralization that's coming up so if you bust a bit of rock quartz open and inside on the fresh broken faces you can see all these sort of broken up pieces re-cemented together with all sorts of different colors in it this is looking really promising now as the time went past you know as i said this is may have stopped 10 10 kilometers below the surface so you may be wondering well how did that how did that quartz get on the surface now that we can metal detect it well simple little process called millions and millions and millions of years of erosion Australia is one of the most geologically stable countries in the entire planet and not much has changed for millions of years and so what has happened is that huge mountain ranges have just been eroded away and dumped into the sea and so what is happening is now the land level is down here somewhere tens of kilometers of sediment has been washed off the, the continent and dumped into the sea you can only guess how much gold has gone dumped into the sea and so now this stuff is now poking up through the surface and this is what us as present-day prospectors and as past prospectors have been trying to find so keep your eye open for this magic brecciated quartz or look for the laminated quartz and keep an eye open so what you're looking for the, the all together is we want structures big structures the longer the structure it is the more deeper it goes it goes all the way down to these chambers short look faults especially if you're looking at geological maps don't go deep okay so you want big structures you want iron rich rocks you want quartz veining and when you get out there pick up the quartz and have a look if it's nice and white as the color of this whiteboard maybe time to move on to the next next bit but look for the quartz that is stained colors break it open is the color inside the rock or just on the outside which is maybe present day weathering has put it on so look for those, those things then if you've got broken up quartz laminated quartz look inside that you may be lucky enough to even see visible gold and so um, it can get very high grades in these sort of structures say ounce per ton sometimes multi ounces per ton there's a lot of voids in there for the gold to precipitate out so keep an eye open for that if you find that in the field 
you know, GPS that location because you want to come back to it over and over and over again, grid it, metal detect it as much as you can and keep it under your hat because this could be a bonanza shoot. Hopefully that helps you.